Damn. If you've been around the internet for these past couple years, you would have undoubtedly heard of the word Bitcoin. Some of you might even have some Bitcoin. But what does it actually mean to own it? When you own Bitcoin, you don't own it in the traditional sense as if you were to own a phone or a car. What you own are the keys to access the record of how much Bitcoin you have in a publicly distributed ledger, like a key to a safety deposit box. But how do we ensure each individual has access to their own box and not somebody else's? To create these special keys, Bitcoin uses an algorithm, the Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, ECDSA. Through this process, the authenticity and ownership of certain funds can now be verified. The math behind ECDSA consists of two major parts, elliptic curves and finite fields. Let's focus on finite fields. Finite fields are exactly what they sound like. They are fields that consist of a finite number of elements. In Bitcoin's algorithm, a predefined field is given to us. Calculations done with the numbers outside this field will wrap around and fall into the range. Given a prime number P, we will have a set of integers going from zero to P. Operations that are done between any two integers in the set reduced by modulo P would give us another number within the initial given set. This is thanks to modulo arithmetic. Think of it like a 12 hour clock. We have 12 numbers in a set. If you add three to 12 o'clock, you would get 15. If you then reduce 15 by modulo 12, you would get three o'clock which is in our initial given set. For Bitcoin, this is the prime field that we are given. Essentially, Bitcoin's algorithm is calculating elliptic curves in the relation to the finite field. In the next episode, I will talk more about the second part of ECDSA, which are elliptic curves. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Uh.